the Minister what reports has she received about the state of the schools receiving funding in the announcement today? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Anne Tolley. I've seen comments from a former Member of Parliament stating that particular schools needed a quote, significant funding boost to help with the backlog of capital works that had been put on hold, end quote. This comment was from the Honourable Paul Swain, former Labour MP for Rimutaka, and in relation to the four Upper Hutt schools that we've announced will receive an additional $30 million in funding today. Under the previous administration, three successive Ministers of Education decided they would freeze capital funding for years while they conducted an education super school Labour Party thought experiment. Our commitment to these schools today recognises they and their community were done a tremendous wrong by the previous administration. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Speaker, I seek leave to table the press statement of the Minister of Education, which indicates the total spend is 30 million and not 44. Is there any objection to that press statement being tabled? There appears to be none. Point we come. Order, point of order, the Honourable Chris Carter. Speaker, I seek leave to table a press statement saying economic, education economic stimulus package mostly recycled material. Is there any objection to that press statement being tabled? There is objection. There is objection. We come now to question number seven in the name of the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr. Speaker, Honourable Trevor my Mallard. question is to the Minister of Labour and asks. What will be the gain in real income per week, adjusted for inflation since the 1st of April 2008, of a full-time worker on the minimum wage as a result of the government's decision on the 2009 minimum wage increase? Mr Speaker. Honourable Kate Wilkinson. $3.78. Oh. Speaker. Welcome to the price of wheat. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. The Speaker. Mr Speaker, did she consult with the Minister of Māori Affairs or the Minister for the Community, Se Community and Voluntary Sector before she took this issue to Cabinet? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Kate Wilkinson. I am always open to receiving representations from the Government's Supply and Confidence Partner. I received a letter from the Minister of Māori Affairs TPK also made a submission. We took those submissions into consideration when calculating a fair, balanced and realistic minimum wage. Has the Minister seen any reports regarding the minimum wage? Mr Speaker. Kate Wilkinson. Uh, Mr Speaker, I've seen a report on the recent change from the New Zealand Herald noting that in the present recessionary environment, quote, only the hopelessly optimistic or the ideologically blinkered could object. Unquote. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Speaker. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr. Speaker, was her original proposal, in which she did not support an increase, a result of submissions from either the ministerial summit group, to which she was not invited? or her former exclusive brethren clients who run sweatshops. Point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Yesterday, yesterday you uh, set new, very pedantic standards for the answering of the question. Uh, those standards should apply to the asking of the question. But I'd ask sir, if you to rule which bit of that question from the Honourable Trevor Mallard a man well known for his abuse of the question process in this House order, order, actually, actually order. complies with your new standard. Order. Speaking of the point of order, Dr. The Honourable Michael Cullen. Taking objection to uh, him being described as having a pedantic ruling, because that is a pejorative term and one not appropriate to be used by the Leader of the House. The second thing is the member simply made factual references. There was no epithets, term of abuse, or any of the other terms referred to in standing orders. So it referred to the fact that the exclusive brethren were formerly clients of the member when she was a practising lawyer. Uh, order. The, no, no the member has made that. his point. He does not need to add to it. The Honourable Jerry Brownlee made a perfectly valid point that where questions contain a number of issues in them, the minister can choose to answer which bit 
she chooses to answer. I must say, before I take my seat, we have a, a bit of a problem emerging where some answers and some questions, especially supplementary questions, are too long. I, I applaud members on the, on the structure of the primary questions today. They are good, short, to, to the point questions. But some supplementary questions get too long and some answers get too long. In this case, the Honourable Minister may answer which part of that question she chooses. to my answer from one of the questions yesterday, and it's the same answer. The member is assuming too much. There was significant consultation throughout the process of the minimum wage review, and the decision was made based on that consultation and based on the information received. We come now to question number eight in the name of the Honourable Tō Hanare. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Treaty of Waitangi Negotiations. What progress has recently be made in treaty settlements. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Today the Government signed letters of agreement with three groupings representing eight iwi. Those three groups are the Kuruhaupo, Kite, Waiponamud, Tainui, Taranaki, Kite, Tonga and Ngāti Tō, Rangatira. When finalised, the agreements will resolve all outstanding historical claims in the South Island and substantial claims in the Lower North Island uh, they mark a significant milestone in achieving the government's objective of justly and durably settling all treaty grievances by the end of 2014. The Honourable Tō uh, Mr Speaker, what does the agreement signed today between the Crown and Te Tau Ihu Iwi represent? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Chris Finlayson. The agreements send a strong signal of the government's intention to maintain the current momentum in the treaty settlements area. The Titaihu agreements represent the, fir the first comprehensive regional settlements in an area where iwi interests are fully overlapped and highly contested. Hekia Parata. What leadership has the Crown shown in reaching agreement with Te Tauihu Iwi today? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Today's signing is a clear example of strong political leadership that the Government is committed to bringing to this important area of work. I want to acknowledge the personal leadership of the Prime Minister in support of the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance in making the agreement possible. I also acknowledge the work of my predecessor, the Honourable Dr Michael Cullen, as Minister of Treaty Negotiations, who worked so hard on these settlements. I also want to make a special mention of the active involvement of the Minister of Māori Affairs, Dr Peter Sharples, who participated personally in talks with respective claimant groups and who made a significant contribution toward making today's signings possible. The Honourable Dr Michael Cullen. Has the Minister seen uh, a cartoon on the front page of the New Zealand Herald uh, which purports to imply the Government has agreed to allow Ngāti Tōa to charge royalties uh, for people performing uh, kamati? Uh, and if so, would he care to comment on the veracity uh, of that implied assertion? Uh, yes, I have seen the cartoon. Uh, the I, regard, Chris I regard the cartoon as puerile and inaccurate. The suggestion of kamati kamati dollar dollar is highly offensive to Ngāti Toa. We are not talking about that kind of redress. And my hope is that as we move forward in treaty settlements, and the minister, uh, the member would understand this because of his experience when minister uh, with uh, agreements on the east coast of the North Island, it would be very helpful if journalists, and I hope I don't sound like Winston Peters, if journalists would get their facts right. Rahui <laughs> Katane. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the minister. How will settling treaty